What fan theory will always be canon to you? At the end of the thing, Mac ready his gasoline and the whiskey bottle. He made all the bottles into Molotov cocktails. He knew he was going to die with the thing, or likely from it, so there was no reason for him to save an entire bottle of just whiskey on his person when that could have been another weapon. At the end, he offers the bottle to Childs, who drinks it as if nothing was wrong. The thing wouldn't know what whiskey tastes like, and reveals Childs as being replaced. There's also the whole, Childs literally doesn't have a breath. Watch that last scene again. Kurt Russell is puffing away in the arctic cold, but Childs. The Ember Island players of The Last Airbender got a live action movie. Pinky in the brain, one is a genius, the other is insane. It says it right there, brain is the insane one, megalomania, and Pinky is the genius who always manages to foil his nefarious schemes, while maintaining the appearance of being a doddering fool, so brain never catches on and gets rid of him. There is an episode where Pinky gets to scheme and succeeds at everything he tries. That Marty died in the tunnel getting the almanac from Biff's car, Doc heard about this and went back in time just long enough to be at the end of the tunnel to drop a rope ladder in time, saving that timeline's Marty, how else would he know? One of my favorites, the entirety of the burn notice storyline is an oversimplification, and we don't actually know what happened. It is admitted that Burn Notice is made to be a retelling of Weston's journey post-Burn, but think about how incredibly simple it all is. Everyone's characteristics are very cleanly described. Fee is never too violent, despite the fact that she has all the character traits situations pointing to extreme violence, Sam only ever drinks just the appropriate amount, despite displaying clear, basically alcoholic tendencies. Mike pretty much never loses his cool, even in situations where he clearly should have lost it, etc. Basically, the story has been cleaned up, so to speak. Mike may be telling the story of his past to Nate's son, as pointed to by the writers, but it's extremely unlikely that we're getting the truth. More like getting the gist of the main points, and filling in the gaps with some adventures. Alternative theory, Mike's story as told by Nate's son and that's why the story feels so cleaned up and polished. The machines are actually the good guys of the Matrix universe. They were horribly mistreated by humanity, and humanity even tried to wipe them out by blocking out the sun. And yet despite it all, the machines actually saved humanity by plugging them into the Matrix. Even in the movies, it's stated that they tried to create a paradise for humanity. And as we all know, the battery theory makes no sense at all. So I can only conclude that the machines wanted to spare humanity from the bleak desert of the real that humanity had created. And I mean, even looking at the behavior of the machines, the only one who displays any real malevolence toward humanity is Agent Smith. And even the other machines think Smith is out of line by obsessing over his hatred of humanity. If they really hated humanity, shouldn't Smith's behavior be considered normal? To add to this, there's an episode in the Animatrix where a couple of machine diplomats tried to gain entry to a UN meeting to come up with a compromise, but the humans weren't having any of it and denied them entry. Then humanity got its butt kicked. That for every episode of the X-Files, there were two or three cases where there was a perfectly logical explanation and Scully was totally right. I mostly believe this because I don't understand how after years of seeing that there are real monsters, Scully would still scoff at the idea of vampires or whatever. Doesn't make sense, unless she is often proven correct. The courage the cowardly dog theory. Everything that happens is a pretty normal occurrence. It's just being filtered through the eyes of a dog. Their house is in the middle of nowhere, and crazy scary strangers just keep showing up. He saves his people from them, just like my dog saves me from the mailman. Yeah and that is apparently why the humans never overreact like courage does. The merchant at the beginning of Aladdin is just making up the story, as he is just trying to sell you a lamp. The merchant is not the same person as the genie. Event Horizon is the first warp drive capable ship that goes horribly awry, setting mankind up for an incredibly grim dark future, set in the 40k universe. There's a theory from some comic book that Superman doesn't have the powers of flight, super strength, invulnerability, heat vision, etc. He only has super psychokinetic abilities. That is, he can move stuff with his mind. It only manifests as his powers. This would explain why he can pick up, 
say, a cruise ship. If you rested a cruise ship on a point as small as a person, it would break in half. Superman, though, is lifting the whole thing with his mind powers, so the force is distributed throughout, so it's not concentrated. His mind interprets his desire to push with his muscles and so forth as demands for the psychic power and fills in with psychokinetic response, like a phantom limb, under the long arm of Gil Hamilton. So Superman essentially has unlimited psychokinetic potential, or he has no real understanding of what it is, but it's limited by his own personally imagined limitations. This was proposed actually in the Marvel Universe, where Reed Richards hypothesized how Hyperion, an alien with powers very much like Superman, could lift the Baxter building from one corner, and I'm showing both my age and the length of my neck but. Chill is Cave Johnson and Caroline's daughter. Sean Connery's character in The Rock is actually James Bond. John Mason. The Rock was imprisoned in 1962. This is actually the year that Dr. No came out. It's likely they were nodding towards Bond with the choice of year, but it kinda disproves that he could be 007, because he'd have been an Electras for all of the Connery adventures. The sentimental State Farm commercial that ends in I'm never letting go really foreshadows the guy leaving his family. Throughout the ad, the man is reciting all kinds of I'm never scenarios, I'm never getting married, we're never having kids, we're never moving to the suburbs, etc. And in the scene following each I'm never he is doing exactly what he says he'd never do. So in the final scene, when he and his wife are watching a movie at home while his kids are sleeping contentedly around them he says I'm never letting go. It follows that in the next scene, he must be letting go. Since it is a commercial about insurance I thought they were hinting at life insurance. So he dies. There is no special Krabby Patty secret recipe. The paper in Mr. Krabs bottle is SpongeBob's job contract. He is what makes them so yummy since in the first episode, he got behind the grill and churned out a ton of tasty burgers with no training. That discounts Jim, the previous fry cook. However, one thing to note about Spongebob is that the episodes don't really have too much continuity. They contradict each other pretty often. Franklin Richards is the reason people in the Marvel use stop aging. He hit 7 and his reality warping power froze the heroes in a state of arrested development at their prime of roughly 10 years after the FF got their powers. All subsequent Mad Max films after the original are told through the oral tradition after generations have passed. Which is how Max can be a cop in the first film and then have the apocalypse seem to happen generations before in the later films. The setting is the one that the storyteller understands. The eternal happiness theory of the Pokemon anime. Basically, in episode 1 of the show Ash sees OO, which is later stated in a Pokedex entry to grant eternal happiness to whomever sees it, Ash's eternal happiness is being able to be a kid and explore with his Pokemon forever, which explains why he never ages past 10. I just like it better than the stupid coma theory quite frankly. I'm sure it was pretty cool for whatever first had the coma theory, but now it is applied to everything with any fantasy or surreal setting. This one isn't a spoiler. Luckily, in Community, the show is about a group of 7 friends going to a community college. They meet in a study room all the time and never study there but just talk and hang out there. There are 7 of them and 8 chairs. The last chair, next to the main character, Jeff is where the viewer is and you feel just like a part of the group. It's not a community college, it's actually an insane asylum. That bikini bottom is located at Bikini Atoll and is the result of nuclear testing. Kalau has cancer. This is why his parents give him everything and tolerate his relentless whining and complaining. This is evidenced by his bald head and sickly complexion. It's actually quite tragic. According to the theory, this also explains why all the episodes look like a dream. Clouds, visual effects, and are narrated by the grandmother. So he is basically on his deathbed while his grandmother tells him stories about his life. When I started reading Harry Potter I downloaded a bundle of ebooks and read the first four books. The fifth one, unbeknownst to me was not the real one but was a full length fan fiction piece. It was not poorly written enough that stupid me noticed until it got far too weird. Harry was hooking up with Hermione and morphing into a griffin. Malfoy was hooking up with Ginny and plotting against his own father, but you were never sure if he was for real or not. Lots of lovemaking. 
people polymorphing everywhere to have more lovemaking. I was quite a way in before I realized something was fishy. Still a bit embarrassed I fell for it, but it has confused me forever since. I have trouble keeping straight what is real and what isn't. Captain Hook and his pirates are just lost boys who escaped Peter Pan before he could have them euthanized for the crime of growing up. Ron was Hufflepuff, Hermione was Raventlaw, and Harry was of course Slytherin. Everyone who is sorted into Gryfinder chooses it, because anyone can choose to be brave. It is our choices, Harry, that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities, Albus Dumbledore. Harry Potter headcanon, George dyeing his hair an outrageous color because he always saw Fred in the mirror. Ditto is a failed attempt to clone Mew. The one for Spongebob that theorized that the real reason that Mr. Krabs didn't want Plankton to steal the Krabby Patty plans was not because then the chum bucket would be able to compete with the Krusty Krab. It was because Mr. Krabs was a sociopath who made the patties out of fish. Elsa and Anna's parents shipwrecked on their way to Rapunzel's wedding. The blonde equals magic works together with this. My so and I have a theory that Teddy in Bob's Burgers is actually a millionaire who continues to work as a handyman because he is bored. This explains how he can afford to spend so much time just sitting around the restaurant. This is also why anytime someone asks him to sign something he acts completely unaware incompetent as to how where to sign. He is off the grid and signing anything would create a paper trail that could lead to his whereabouts. Zion is just another level of the Matrix. Because it explains the otherwise gaping plot hole of Neo has powers outside of the Matrix 2 because of reasons. That or the Matrix sequels never happened. E.T. will always be a Jedi in my eyes. Well we know that E.T. and Yoda are from the same galaxy. There are E.T.'s in the Senate in episode 2. Or maybe 3. Too lazy to look up. And in E.T. he passes by a kid dressed as Yoda and says home. That when Walt kills someone in Breaking Bad he adopts their characteristics as his own. He is shown eating a sandwich with the crust on it early in the first season. When he and Jesse kidnap that Greek dealer and bike lock him in the basement Walt makes him a sandwich and the dealer asks Walt to cut the crusts off. After Walt eventually kills him. Whenever Walt is shown making a sandwich he cuts the crust off. Not convinced? When Jane dies, Walt has a scotch with her father. I don't think he knows who he is talking to. But he orders his scotch meat. Mike takes his scotch on the rocks. And after Walt kills him so does he. Still. Okay. One more. Gus. When Walt kills Gus. He cements into Gus Roland Emina. He starts doing some pretty brutal crap with Gus trademark stoicism. I believe shortly after Gus death Walt gives the I'm not in the money business. I'm in the empire business speech. 2. Gus ran the largest crystal M empire in the southwest. Also there is the episode where Gus drinks down poison, goes to the toilet and lays a towel down for his knees. Later when Walt's cancer is acting up again he does the same thing when vomiting into the toilet. Voldemort is bald so that nobody can make Apologos potion using his hair. The Pokemon War Theory, it really only applies to the first series, but there are no adult males at or near middle ages except for scientists, naval officers, and criminals. The only reasonably aged male is Lieutenant Surge, and what would he be a lieutenant of? Ash's father died in the war, that's why his mother is so concerned, but willing to let Ash go. He's just like his father and he loved Pokemon. Jenny and Joy are the result of cloning that was needed to fill necessary positions when people go off to war. There are tons of leftover nurses so they give free health care, at least to Pokemon. Jenny was filling in since most of the police force had to go fight. There's more but I can't remember it. That Emperor Palpatine took control over the galaxy due to impending invasion of the Uz and Vong. Bill and Peggy had an affair which led to Bobby being born. This explains why Bill is so attracted to Peggy, and why she's so mean to him, and how Bobby resembles Bill more than Hank. Hank also has a narrow urethra, so it's hard for him to conceive. I don't know man. Bobby looks a lot like Cotton though. I wish people would mention what exactly they're talking about so that I could look it up and marvel along with them. Emily, Jesse's original owner, is actually Andy's mother. Toy Story. Dracula wasn't actually a vampire. He was just a dude from Transylvania who came in and seduced away his real estate agent's fiance. 
so the real estate agent gets together a posse, hunts him down and kills him, then forces his ex, fiance to marry him. The whole supernatural bit was just a gimmick they use in telling the story to get away with murder. You have been visited by the party pug he just wants you to celebrate with him. Comment woohoo to celebrate with the party pug. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.